here to share some experiences, I suppose. Uh, been very fortunate to be involved in uh, training uh, designers, uh, consultants, and construction workers um, on energy efficient buildings, passive houses, what I'm passionate about, but it's not a religion for me. Uh, I'm, I'm open to sort of all, all walks of life, absolutely, but I believe that passive house is really uh, an excellent way of building, and um, I've yet to come across a more energy efficient uh, building standard yet. <clears throat> We, we use this uh, logo of the hand uh, in a lot of our presentations because um, while we can design buildings, you know, you can't make a building with a design. You've got to actually physically put elements together. So we like that uh, logo. And we're talking about um, insulation, windows, thermal bridging, air tightness, and mechanical ventilation. And really, <clears throat> if you remember those five elements, you can build and design uh, super efficient buildings anywhere. And these are the kind of people that we're training. This is a friend of ours, uh, Kevin Brennan. He's retrofitting a 200-year-old um, mid-terrace townhouse, and he's dealing with mummy dust, as he calls it, and all the sort of stuff that you don't see in the classroom. And you know, if we want, if we're serious about retrofitting our building stock, we've got to get people up to speed on and to get down and dirty with this kind of work. So this is what we really enjoy, and we've um, we had very nice experience in uh, in doing that. Um, the world's first uh, passive house tradesperson lab was actually developed by FOSS, now uh, CDETB here in Dublin. We had the great honour of working with um, then FOSS in developing that, and we've had visitors to that from all over the world. Um, and uh, as has as been introduced, we're very active in Ireland, but also the UK, um, all over the United States, um, where we're running training programmes all the time. We've just given our first programme in Australia, so now uh, we have people taking exams out there in um, Passive House Consulting and also Passive House Tradesperson, and we've just uh, agreed a deal to uh, deliver training in Beijing. Um, I don't know how we're going to cope language-wise, but <laughs> that'll be an interesting one. So, so basically, we have a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of knowledge and experience here in Ireland that we can share internationally, and I'll give you a sense of that as we go throughout the presentation. Uh, we've trained a lot of people, had a lot of fun doing that, it's a great privilege to work with people. And we're also not involved just in training, but we build things, we design things, we're, we're having to deal with the building regulations um, on a week-to-week on a -week basis as well. So Passive House, uh, we think, is a great uh, platform because uh, Seamus talked about quality build, and really, the, if you were to summarise Passive House in one word, it's all about quality. You can't meet the standard without extremely good quality. And there's a whole suite of training programs that you can participate in, whether it's a half-day primer or an evening session, um, passive house tradespersons, designers, consultants, you name it. And really, for a lot of people, it's a journey that they, they participate on and, and they, they continue with. There's a growing demand for passive house. Um, there's about a 1,000 projects underway right now in, in the UK. Um, Brussels, as you may have uh, realised, has mandated the Passive House standard from 2015. So from the 1st of January next year, every new build and every major retrofit has to be built to the Passive House standard. And the green uh, bar here on that lower graph um, shows the growth in Passive House construction projects. So this is offices, schools, you know, a and houses as well. And as I mentioned, uh, one of our major markets is, a, is in New York. and. Um, Mayor de Blasio has just identified Passive House as the go-to standard um, in, in la in just in the last two weeks um, for New York as it tries to reduce its energy consumption by 80% by 2050. Uh, there's no mention of LEED in this document or Energy Star or the usual uh, US uh, standards that we're familiar with. They've actually highlighted Passive House as a way forward. So there's a global demand uh, and I'm hoping that that will actually um, sort of come about in Ireland as well. So we have a lot of projects underway here in Ireland, uh, houses of course, uh, university uh, dormitories, um, commercial buildings and schools. So we're gaining a lot of practice um, in building to the passive house in Ireland and obviously we've been through a really horrible uh, construction recession so we don't have as many projects um, as we would like to have but we're certainly building up uh, the skills base to do that. And you can build passive house uh, to, you know, to the retrofit standard and to new build. And these are social housing projects. And I just thought this morning coming up in the car, you know, I think the government in the budget announced the plan to build, is it 20,000? 
social housing projects, wouldn't it be amazing if we actually said, right, those 20,000 houses have to be built to an extraordinarily high standard? I'm not going to label it now, it's just a really, really good standard. Because if that were the case, the construction workers on those 20,000 houses would actually have an amazing experience you know, in, in building to that standard. We could almost use it as a case study to up train, to upscale and train a lot of construction workers. So we've got an opportunity, we've got a case study of 20,000 houses that we could work on. So how are we doing internationally? Um, if we look to our nearest neighbour, you know, it's 15 times the population um, in terms of um, architects, designers, construction workers. But as regards certified passive house designers, we're actually holding our own. We're just sort of keeping power, if you will. So I think that's something that we can be very uh, proud of. And um, in relation to uh, construction workers, again, given the 15 times different population, we're doing ex extraordinarily well. Of course, the hope is that these people will get work and to work on good projects and, and innovative projects. Um, and we, this is why we're commencing training now um, in the UK next month, uh, because we see uh, there's, a, there's a, a need, if you like, to upskill construction workers there as well. So the, the Passive House standard is, is a global standard. Uh, it's, it's something that everybody can participate in, in and it's, it's based on very good quality, and Ireland is doing particularly well in that. Uh, you mentioned uh, the house that I built um, back in 2003, and uh, the guy in the blue uh, overall is, is not from Wicklow, he's from Germany, and he's teaching my brother-in-law there who put on the hat and the high-vis jacket for this photograph, um, he's teaching about airtight tape, and I just thought, you know, in, in that single photograph there is, is a hell of a lot going on. This was, this was uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, we had no clue about air tightness or tapes or anything like that. And it was a great, great experience. And you can, you, that, that carpenter there is actually a fenster meister. He's, he doesn't, he's not a carpenter. He specialises in fitting windows. That's all he does. And uh, I, I think it wouldn't be great if we develop a range of education programmes here. And, and the expertise uh, that that gentleman had in fitting windows was just really extraordinary. So designers alone are not going to deliver high quality buildings, that's just simply not going to happen. And as mentioned before, often we get building failure post first fix. So you do the blow door test, everything looks fine, and then uh, the, the, the guy with the, with the, um, with the Stanley knife, uh, Zorro, comes in and makes X's everywhere in that beautiful membrane, uh, because if you need a hole this big, why not make it that big? Um, to, to get your services and pipes in. So we really got to be very, very careful, uh, especially about the services, um, construction workers. And what we really want to do is we want to train people to think through their fingers. That doesn't sound a bit too weird, you know? So every time you make a decision, every time you go to put something together, every time you take out your Stanley knife, or every time you, you go to do something, you think about it right, what's the impact of what I'm going to do now? And if we can do that, then you, you've got people who are sort of on a different plane and who can build really wonderful buildings. So, um, you know, not just in Ireland, but internationally, globally, construction standards are really, really terrible. Let's be honest about it. I think we're in a pretty good place here in Ireland, internationally speaking. Um, but it, generally, if you look around the, the world, um, you know, a new build in Australia has four-inch stud walls with no insulation. That's completely insane. People are living in poor comfort. We should know better to do that. So I'm not making fun of, of Ireland uh, when I show um, this here. But you know, we have had too many chiefs and not enough Indians. We need more tradespeople. I think that's quite clear from all the presentations here this morning. And we want to set up an era basically where the cowboy builder is basically ostracised and really have no more role in, in, in construction society. They just, they just don't have have a role to play. And this is easy. We can transform uh, the sector uh, very easily, I believe. So in the Passive House uh, tradesperson training, there's actually two streams, one on building envelope and one on building services. But they overlap. So if you take the envelope program, you're also actually learning about mechanical services. And likewise, if you take the building services program, you're learning about envelope. Because you know we're crossing over uh, on site all the time. So it's very important that. Um, no man is an island, so to speak. So there's a, uh, there's a fair bit of theory in it. We need to give people a good foundation, a good basis. Um, uh, we talk about U-values, thermal bridging, air tightness, these five uh, uh, elements that we talked about earlier on and, and that Seamus talked about. 
Uh, we talk about um, the PHPP software, um, how to design in detail, because often we need, to we need to communicate on site through a uh, construction detail. You know, an architect may have one idea how it's done, but a construction worker may have a totally different idea. And we, we try to give them confidence to actually take a pen and pencil and sketch it out. And for many of them, it's the first time that we'll have actually done that. Um, and we also talk about economics because we want to make sure that these things actually make sense economically. But of course, there's a big risk um, with PowerPoint, um, it, it, and we really want to avoid that. I think you know we cannot train uh, construction workers alone uh, with PowerPoint. That's completely pointless. So we need to give them at least some sense of the materials. And of course, this is a big challenge because where do we get the resources to do that? How do we get them to a lab? You know, how can we actually get them away from the job site uh, for a longer period of time uh, to actually participate hands-on? So um, the German word for tradesperson is handwerker, and uh, so again we're back to this thinking uh, fingers concept, and we really want to. Uh, what we're trying to do here is trying to change a building, uh, the construction culture. And when we built our first passive house in Ireland 10 years ago, I honestly thought there'd be a queue down the road of thousands of people looking to sign up and get involved in this. And it's a very, very slow process. To change a building culture takes a lot of time. And I've been trying to do my own little way in that uh, for quite some time. So it's a big, big challenge. So in the UK, we partnered with San Gaban and we developed um, a similar uh, training workshop to the one that the uh, that CDETB have done. So this is a... This is a practical training workshop, and you can see there that it's local materials, local construction type, um, local setups, if you like, and dealing with not easy stuff like putting insulation on the wall. Anybody can do that. But what about the junctions? What about the penetrations, air tightness? How do you deal with all that? And we're looking forward um, to rolling that out. And we do uh, acknowledge the difference between knowledge and skills. But we need new skills as well, new, new, um, new materials, airtight membranes, uh, how do you deal with those? There's a certain practice that we need uh, to establish to get familiar with those. So this would just give you an insight into, into the, kind of, um, the kind of work that we do. Um, we're also extremely proud to be working with uh, CDETB in Dublin. And um, we've had uh, visitors to this facility from all over the world, literally, and have absolutely been totally blown away by the quality of training that's, um, that's provided there. We call these models up here, up on the top left, our super models. You can look, but don't touch. And also, they deal with the tricky junctions. So it, it, again, there's no point in showing somebody a blank wall. What's really interesting is the junction between wall and floor, between intermediate floor and wall, between window and wall, between roof and wall. It's where all these things come together. That's the challenge. And that's where we have to try and think in 3D. And the bottom uh, left photograph there, that's our little miniature blower door house. So we set that up, we set that house up to, to just about fail the passive house standard, which is 0.6 air changes per hour, 50 pascal. So they have to go in, they have to measure the volume. Uh, these are craft workers that go in and measure the volume. They have, to, they have to do the blower door test, do the calculations, work out what the air change rate is, find the leaks, seal those leaks, and redo the whole thing. And you know, when they move from this situation to a real life situation, uh, they're in pretty good condition. So you can't touch the supermodels, they're up in the catwalk and you just look at them and study them and get to know them. We teach them how to draw those details as well, so they have to draw all those construction details so it's easier to communicate. And then on the other side of the working lab, we have working models. So you can see here cavity wall features a lot. And you know, I remember my first training session in New York, I was absolutely torn to shreds. The, the, in the, the New Yorkers are very unforgiving. They will not accept training material from somewhere else. You've got to localise it. And similarly, so if we're developing and delivering training for here in Ireland, it's got to be localised. So cavity wall construction, you know, timber frame construction, whatever. And again, they're dealing there with hands-on challenges. And, you know, they come in day one kind of hardened and cynical. Day, do, day two, they're kind of melting, mellowing a little bit. And day three, they're making fun of each other, saying, you know, that's the worst air tightness detail I've ever seen. So they really get it. They embrace it. They love it. They enjoy it. And, um, you know, again, I hope that they will go on to be, to be good ambassadors. We're also dealing with, with insulation and, you know, the usual things... Um, a uh, fair amount of ladies take the training as well. And I just wanted to share a little experience. So this lady here uh, in, in the top left hand side, she came to Dublin uh, from New York to learn about Passive House Construction. Julie Moscovich is her name. She went on, on actually to win a Global Award, Passive House Award uh, this year. 
Um, I don't know if you can spot her passive house project in, in the middle of that road there. It has the uh, shuttering up in front of it. But, but there's a thermographic image that she took uh, before. Uh, you know, so you've got the existing uh, house and, and the thermographic image below. So, you know, and she got, uh, that project uh, is 120 years old and she got down to an air tightness of 0.36. Okay, she left Dublin, she went back to New York, she shot the guy who had a can of spray foam, she put him in the, dump, in the, in the uh, skip and she said, we got to use tapes, we got to use membranes, we got to use proper material. And everybody was scratching their head. She was giving demonstrations and all that. And it's such a great story. So she has now educated a whole plethora of construction workers um, doing this. And, and she's developed, uh, she's become quite famous. So if we can do that, you know, all we need to do is create these ambassadors who can go out here. It's not rocket science. It's very, very simple. Um, but we need to kind of enthuse them and excite them. And we can do that here um, and all over the world. So we also do mechanical uh, services training, as I mentioned, and uh, this was um, a different group of uh, people. We also like to do what we call pro-demo. So if you're doing training, um, like I don't know anything about setting up ventilation equipment. I'm not doing that day in, day out. So we bring in people who are actually expert in that, who do it day in, day out. This is Morris Falvey in the top left-hand corner there, and he's talking about this equipment. And again, this is another one of our trainees. This is a contractor from Philadelphia. Uh, Tim MacDonald and uh, he went back to Philly and, um, and, and again won the Global Passive House Award. He, he was just blown away by what he saw. So we, we can send people abroad to do excellent training and to learn new things, to learn about new culture. But we actually have a lot of skills here in Ireland as well and a lot of resources that we can actually bring people in and send them back to make a difference. Um, this is our little blower door house uh, in Finglas, uh, which was developed by the CTETB. And again, the construction workers learn how to balance the ventilation equipment, how to set up the supply rates for, for bedrooms, the extract rates and bathrooms, and to, to model all that. There's a lot of building science involved again, so um, it's, it's a great programme. And then they do get a certificate. Um, we were adamant in our work that we didn't want a theory only uh, course. To have practical content, of course, takes time and it takes money. So these people are, are if you like, it's a quite a privileged situation and that's a big challenge. How do we get people off site? But um, there's four exams per year, they're internationally recognised and uh, they're globally accredited. And you can see here, this is uh, one of the people who took our training and the amount of hours of practical training that they get is actually noted on their certificate as well. So some people who take the three day training, that's great, they get their certificate. But if you also do practical hands-on training, that's recognised as well on their certificate. This is the training lab then that we built in New York in the Bronx. Um, we partnered with the AEA to do that. And again, you can see here, I mean, you just bring somebody into that space and five seconds, they get it. They see the membranes, they see the service cavity, and they see the mechanical ventilation system. And it's just like opening up another world uh, to them. And they, they, they embrace it, they love it, they enjoy it. And um, again, we have that house set up to barely fail. And we've got a new idea now, by the way, for training. We're going to do two miniature houses with nothing on them. We're going to divide the class in two, and it's a competition who can get it the tightest uh, possible. So we think that's going to bring a lot of uh, enthusiasm and a bit of, you know, uh, people love a bit of competition as well. So uh, if you're thinking about setting up training facilities, you could think about something like that too. So, uh, based on all that kind of experience, uh, what are the challenges? Um, I actually think the primary challenge is, is just getting people uh, to take the training, to, to leave the building site, and Seamus emphasised this very well. Um, are they going to lose pay if they do that? You know, um, can they afford the time off work? Will they be given time off work by the, by the bosses, by the owners? And we've to, we've to enthuse them, you know, that the training is great, it's very beneficial, and it's really something that they, that they really should do. So that's a very big challenge. And how, I honestly don't know what the answer is. I think at the very least, the training should either be free or preferably very, very cheap. You know, if you're, taking some, if you're saying to somebody, take a week off work and give me a thousand euros or something to take training, that's a massive uphill battle that we're going to face. I think we should set the bar very high. You know, we've perfected poor building. It's like we're absolutely brilliant at that. And when I say we, I, ju I mean as a species, not Irish people, just, you know, humanity has perfected terrible buildings. So we should set the bar very, very high. Because if you set the bar high, you can always come down a little bit. But if you're working on mediocrity, it's very hard to raise the bar. So I think we should do that. 
Um, not so much a challenge, I suppose, but we've got to face up to it. You know, that we want to, we have to teach people not just why you should do something or how you should do something, but actually why you should do it. What are the implications of a penetration? What are the implications of using plastic on a construction site for, for, for air tightness, which we should never do? And they lap it up. As some of the speakers have said earlier on, the construction workers really enjoy this and they finally feel as they're getting to know why air tightness is important or why we shouldn't use concrete walls in, uh, in foundations, you know, because of thermal bridging and so forth. So I think that's an important challenge. I think another challenge is even is, is hands-on. Even in a class situation, we've got to get, let people to play with these tapes, get them to feel the membranes, pass around the window, a, a cross-section of a triple glazed window to get them to feel the weight of it. And, and and how fat the frames are, you know. Without that, I think we're actually doing uh, the training and injustice. So we've got to actually have hands-on training as well. And the last challenge I think is, you know, new build is actually pretty easy. Let's be honest. You know, you're following a set of it's like colour by numbers. And as long as you do it well, you can actually manage it. Retrofit is extremely hard, especially if we're striving towards a very high standard uh, like passive house. And we've got to get to the heart of the problem. And I think I would love to be in a situation where we're developing constructors, construction workers here in Ireland who are not only working locally, but actually travelling around the world. A bit like the later hose, and you know, it has to come up with an Irish uniform, an Irish hat, and an Irish waistcoat. Thank you very much. And exporting that know how um, around the world, we can definitely do that. But we should start. We should start at home. Most of the job opportunities are in retrofit, not in new build. So let's develop um, training programs which match with that. So on any construction site, whether it's a um, passive house or, or whatever, it's all about the team process. It's about the architects, the engineers, uh, the suppliers, specifiers, uh, and construction workers. And you know, without us all being on the same boat, you know, we're not going to get on um, so very well. So. That, I suppose, uh, summarises the, the, the fun, the experience we've had over the last um, 10 years. We're looking forward uh, to continuing this realm, and thank you very much. Thank you.